Hi everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and today we're going to continue our little foray into Kublas, that basic linear algebra subprogram library that's built in for CUDA. Uh, and we're going to look at how can we do uh, matrix multiplication uh, using this library. So we already saw how we can use uh, do vector addition, and then we saw about you know three iterations of matrix multiplication that we had to kind of hand optimize. So we started with a naive one. Then we moved on to doing a tiled one, and then we talked a little bit about coalescing. So a lot of work kind of went into, you know, thinking about, you know, how do we get the best performance out of this? But, you know, it's really nice when there's something like Kublas, which is a library that's, you know, written for us that has optimized versions that we can just give it an input and it will run, an, it will run optimized code for. So let's go ahead and get started. So today we'll go ahead and We'll open up our Kublas matrix mull project. So this time, uh, what are we going to do? So we're going to use this function skim, which is a generalized version of matrix multiplication. Um, here we're going to need a couple different libraries. So we're going to, going to actually show off Kublas for skim, but then we're also going to show off uh, Kurand, which is a randomization library. And so we'll use that to actually initialize um, our two matrices instead of having to do it on the CPU side. So it'll actually run kernels on the GPU to uh, and initialize those matrices. So let's go ahead and see what we need. So of course, in order to see all the kublas functions, we need to include kublas v2.h. And then to see all the randomization library stuff uh, functions, we need to include uh, kurand. So here we'll have our verify solution. Now there's a very important thing to note with Kublas, and that's, you know, what is the memory layout or what is the assumed memory layout for these functions? And it turns out, while, you know, in C and C++, we assume that everything is laid out in row major order. That's assuming that when you have a row, the row is contiguous in memory, and it's uh, between different rows. Uh, those are offset by, you know, in elements, in being the length of the row. However, um, for Kublas, it assumes column major order. So what does column major order mean? Column major order assumes that the an entire column is contiguous in memory. So instead of you know element um, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3 all being in conti in one contiguous line in memory, so uh, sequential uh, increasing addresses, this time it assumes that that's the case but for, an entire column. So we need to kind of play around with our indexing a little bit. So we see we've got some modified indexing here. So even though for normal matrix multiplication, we would calculate it by going across the row and then down a column, um, because it's already, it's assumed to be, you know, in this transposed form of a column major, um, what we can actually do is you know, the same kind of thing. So we know that we're going to, it doesn't, it assumes that, you know, the the rows aren't contiguous in memory, so we have to do the um, this kind of switch on both sides for both the rows and the columns. So instead of it being i times n plus k over here, it has to be k times n plus i, and then same thing over here. Instead of being um, k times n plus j, it's the opposite. It's j times n plus k. So not nothing too difficult. The other thing is, since we're using floating point numbers this time, we're going to actually just compare against an epsilon value. So Floating point numbers can get a little bit tricky and they can you know, do some funny things when they round. So a lot of times we don't care if it's an exact match of floating point numbers, we just want it to be close enough. So in this case, we'll set our epsilon value to be uh, 0.001. And then we'll just take the absolute difference of our calculated value on the CPU and then the calculated value on the GPU and we'll just make sure that it's less than that epsilon. So our error is less than that epsilon. Okay, so let's get to uh, the interesting parts of things. So we're going to, to do the same 1024 by 1024 matrix multiplication. Then we'll have our, you know, our normal declaration of pointers, allocation of memory. But this time, we're going to not call a host side function to do the random number generation. We're going to use kurand. So first thing we need to do, kind of like we needed a kublas um, a handle, we need something similar, a kurand generator t object for random number generation. So this time we use 
QRAN generator T. And then we have to create the generator. And we give it this QRAN RNG pseudo default. So this is just kind of like the default random number generator. Then we'll just set a seed. Seed is just, you know, it's mainly for if you want to reproduce results. If you use the same seed, then it will basically do the same randomization. So you can get um, repeatable results. Uh, this time we'll just we'll just use the clock function, we'll, which will get the system clock time. So this is you know, even more kind of a little bit random. Okay, so then we call this uh, QRAN generate uniform. So it generates it based on a uniform distribution. We uh, give it the QRAN generator, and then we give it a, a device pointer, which is what we allocate on the device, and then the number of elements. Because it's a uh, an n by n matrix, we give it n times n. Now, notice something. We don't need to worry about copying the data over to the uh, to the GPU. And that's because we've, we've already allocated memory on the GPU. If we want to fill it on the GPU with values generated on the GPU, we don't need to do any copying. So we can just call this QRAN generate uniform, and it will fill that matrix with values for us. So then we have, uh, we'll do that for our device B. So now we have two matrices of n by n with completely random values based on a uniform distribution. And uh, we're ready to start matrix multiplication. So same kind of thing. This time, uh, again, we need a, a Kublas handle. Then we'll need these scaling factors again, um, just because it's a generalized version of matrix multiplication. Um, it has it has a couple options in there uh, that you can set. So this alpha and this beta value. So the actual uh, a function that it implements is this C matrix is equal to alpha times the A matrix times the B matrix plus beta times the C matrix. So in this time, if we just want to do a regular matrix multiplication like we've implemented previously, we'll just set alpha to 1 so that this ter just turns into A times B. And then we'll set beta to 0. So this term completely goes away, and we just get C equals A times B. So here we get to the actual uh, Kublas skim. So this will calculate that generalized matrix multiplication. So we give it a handle. These Kublas op ends are kind of convenience things. So um, they do. They, there's a couple different things you can do with this. So when you do Kublas op n, this is just a normal matrix. So the matrix you give it uh, is exactly what it will compute um, based on. But you can also do things like Kublas op t, which will, will which will do a transpose of the matrix for you. But um, for this time, we'll just use n um, because we're just doing regular matrix multiplication. Now these three values, they're all n in this case because we're doing square matrices. However, these correspond to the m, n, and k dimensions of the, matrix, of the matrices you're working on. So if you have a m by n matrix times an n by k matrix, you get an m by k result, of course. So this is the value of n uh, of m, n, and k corresponding to this kind of equation up here. Now, you know, in our case, um, oops, let's go ahead and change that to an x. So in our case, it's square, so they're all the same. Here's our alpha value that we pass by reference, our device pointer to a. Then we need another thing in here, this LDA, and that just says what is the leading dimension of a. So another thing, since it's a square matrix, the dimensions are all n, so it can just be n. Then we have db, which is our uh, b matrix pointer. And then again, ldb, which is our leading dimension of b. And then we'll pass in beta by reference from up here. Then our device c. And then finally, our leading dimension of c. And this will calculate matrix multiplication. Uh, it will do the matrix multiply for us. So then after that, we'll copy these values back. We could have also used CUDA, uh, Kublas get matrix. However, you know, that's kind of an optional thing. We don't need to in this case. We can just call CUDA mem copy. We'll verify the solution. So we'll check based on this modified verify solution that we've seen before. This time, assuming that it's in a column major order and not row major. And we'll assert in case, you know, we get any kind of wild, crazy error. That means we've done something wrong. So, um, and we'll compare it, of course, against our CPU implementation of matrix multiplication.
Again, also assuming column major order. Remember, we have to assume it that it's column major because we implemented it. Um, we did all of our random values on the GPU. The GPU assumed that those are column major, and then it did uh, matrix multiplication, assuming those two matrices are column major. So we have to assume that when we do our own calculation on the CPU. So let's go ahead and build our project. So we'll do rebuild and then it should just complete successfully for a 1024 by 1024 matrix. It takes a little bit long, it's not too long, and there we go. So we go ahead, and we verified our solution. Everything's all right. Uh, we didn't throw any assert, which means that it passed all of our tests. Every value had an error that was less than epsilon. So that's going to do it for today. That's kind of, uh, these past two videos have been an introduction to the Kublas, and then in this video, an introduction to the Kurand libraries. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch. Feel free to check out any of this code on uh, github.com slash coffeebeforearch. And uh, I hope you all have a nice day.